Hi, welcome to Short yeah, Circuit. I'm really excited for today because we're solving a problem that we've had for about one day. We don't have internet in our lovely office that is definitely not the old Langley house. But Alta Labs is hopefully here to save the day. This is a switch and AP and networking ecosystem that I have not had the pleasure of experiencing yet. And I'm really stoked to be doing it in this exact environment. Bell's here with me to fact check. We're staying five feet apart, don't worry. We're gonna start with the switch, the S24 POE. We've got the accessory pack here. What do we got in here? Propaganda, community forum, technical support. Oops, sorry. There's stuff in there. See you later. Did you pee? Is that why it's warmer? Uh, don't, don't think about it. Okay. Oh, they come with rack studs. That's so cool. Power cable, only one, which makes me think that this is not gonna have redundant power supplies. Not my preferred, but here we are. And then we've got the little rack here, so we're gonna have to put on the switch in a minute. Oh, we've got some free floaties. Wonderful. Oh, nice, nice foam. Oh, that went right on my laptop. Oh, okay. This is the S24 POE. It's a 24 plus two port switch here. 16 of them, you can see in the box here, can do POE plus power. And the other eight are just normal gigabit. And then on this side, we have two SFP plus ports. So those, in theory, based on it being SFP plus, should do 10 gig. Although it doesn't say, I'm just hoping that is the case. Around the back, we have two fans and a single power supply. I would have really liked to see two power supplies here, if I'm being honest. I don't know what the price point is, but I imagine it's reasonable and that's probably why. I do like they have discrete uh, LEDs for the PoE power, which is nice. And I think that's pretty much it for here. You can screw on the rack gears on the side, but let's look at the Wi-Fi. That's what people want. Hey, look at that. AP6 Professional. It's a 4x4 dual band enterprise wireless access point. So it's not going to be doing Wi-Fi 6E with 6 gigahertz, but it will do 2.4 and 5G on four by four, which is nice. Wow, it's a cool, it's a nice form factor, I will say. I imagine this is an LED here. We got a little, that must be their logo. Yeah, it's their logo. On the back, heat sinking, a, oh, this reset button. Good job, Alta Labs. It's on the back of an access point. Nobody's gonna accidentally like push it. We've got the PoE plus input, which is a one gig RJ45. What else is in here? Propaganda, uh, plastic mounting bracket, screws. Oh, and little feet. If you want to put it on your desk, that's a good, good inclusion. Oh, nice. Uh, a bracket for installing on drop ceiling T bars. It's got the little ears, so you would click it on and then screw in the presumably the blast the plastic bracket. So it's IP54, which means I should be able to do this. No. We've got two. I wouldn't go all the way. I think the 54. What does 54 mean? Do you remember Splash. what IP54 is? Like splashes indirectly? IP54 is pretty good. I just dipped the tip. That should be fine, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, tip dip. Tip dip. Here, I could try this tip too. Here, I'll tip, dip this tip too. What are you trying to do? Is this like a ubiquity competitor or something? Yeah, but we need internet at the house, right? So. Wow. You're welcome. We have brilliance. How does this work? Ah, wait, what the hell? How does this go? Oh, oh, uh, so it just clicks in. I imagine this would be a lot easier to do if it was on a wall, because you would just like tilt the end it and then the slide it, I imagine. There's two little like spring-loaded tabs on the side. Well, that screw's gone forever. It's really, really springy sprongs. Oh, there we go. And then you said wiggle it back and forth. Oh yeah, that came out pretty easily. You'd imagine it would be on a ceiling and you would just stick the screwdriver in there. I would pop that side out and then you just give it a wiggle. Yeah, that's, that's pretty easy. I like that you don't need a special tool. And uh, this is just another one of those. I guess that means we can deploy some Wi-Fi. But not before I tell you about our sponsor, Trend Micro. It's been over a year since we were reminded how important it is to protect yourself from hackers, malware, and viruses online. Trend's Micro Premium Security Suite has several important tools to keep you safe. Things like a secure password manager and Wi-Fi protection. You're even protected against identity theft with their dark web monitoring tool. It works on Mac, PC, Android, and iOS. So save yourself some money while also saving your personal info. So use the code SHORTCIRCUIT10 at the link down below to get 10% off Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite today. All right, we've moved inside. I've been allowed to use a little bit of power so we can try this out. And uh, we got the APs here. It linked up to the neighbor's internet, which is great. I mean, uh, our internet, great. Let's see if the Wi-Fi works. Got these great ubiquity <laughs> Ethernet cables. There's one. Let's see, do we get any lights? Hey, blue. 
I downloaded their app and got signed in. Oh yeah, look at that, right there. So yeah, I see them on my phone already, which is cool. Wait, oh, they even show on my laptop. Sick. I just am on the Alta Labs website connected to the neighbor's Wi-Fi, and it's working just fine. So here, let me go set up. Looks like they both have firmware updates, unfortunately. Damn, that was, uh, that was fast. Connected. I want the most Wi-Fi 5. We'll do 160 wide, why not? It's not letting me pick DFS channels, which is a little strange. Look at that, oh, that's cute. It's even got like a traffic graph. Let me add a, a Wi-Fi network that we can connect to here. Neighbors Wi-Fi, that seems appropriate. Add password. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot you can do that. Uh, it was one of the big features that they announced when Alta Labs kind of came to market with these new APs. Uh, you can have multiple passwords and define different settings based on that password. You can do this on Ubiquity access points now too, but you could have like one Wi-Fi network and you have a password for you and your partner and then you have a password for your kids and you wanna have no download cap where you, you set them a cap where you can set a schedule so they only get Wi-Fi at certain times or uh, you could make it so you bypass the like adult filtering and they don't. Blocked applications, what can I add? Ooh. Look at all these applications. Oh, there's no search here. That's a little lame. Let's try that TikTok. Yeah, no TikTok in this house. I'm gonna update these and then let's try them out. You know, curiously, actually, I don't see the switch. It's not detecting the switch. I don't know if the switches work on their dashboard. Maybe it's just a dumb switch. Wow, they actually updated. Almost, it feels like in seconds. I mean, we cut the camera for a few minutes there, but I wasn't really paying attention and they're already done. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, the traffic, it's already there. It's very responsive, I like that. And it's cool because this isn't like a cloud key with Ubiquity or like a paid online service. This is just what you get by default. You can have full management of your devices on their cloud uh, without having to pay for anything or pay for a subscription, which is pretty cool for like normies. Um, it would be nice to have the option to self-host the controller, and I imagine they're probably working on that. I can see my device here. Look, I got an IP address. We can see our negotiated rates are around 1,000, 1,300 meg. Let's run a speed test. I think the neighbors only have one gig up and down, so that's the best we're gonna get here. Probably should, uh, here, let me, let, me, let me optimize this a little more here. Look at how optimized my Wi-Fi is. <laughs> I don't know if these channels are already in use though, so let me check that really quick. Let's try the scan feature and it will tell us. Scan, quick scan. Shouldn't interrupt your Wi-Fi network, that's cool. Oh wow, that was, look how fast that was, it's already done. It looks like I should use, I need 160 wides, so I need quite a few. Are the only 160 wides we got? Okay, so I could do like 112, let's try that. Wi-Fi channel. There we go, yeah, the DFS channels are working now too. So maybe that's just an app thing or because they were out of date, I'm not sure. And then for AP1, let me just disable AP1. Oh, look at that. You pick the channel and you just hit disable. So easy. I love you, Ubiquity, but the amount of times I've asked for just let me turn off the goddamn radio on an AP without having to screw around with like AP groups, that was so easy and that's how easy it should be. We do have it up on the 160 wide now. Let me connect and then we'll do a proper speed test and see how fast she goes. It's not Wi-Fi 6E, so we're probably not gonna see beyond gigabit speeds and we only have a one gig uh, neighbor connection here, but it should still be pretty quick. Uh, looks like about 560 down. Getting pretty close to 700 up. Uh, if you had faster internet and um, maybe not other people using it, sorry neighbors, It'd probably be faster, but that's pretty good. Try it on my phone, I guess. It looks pretty similar. 450 down, 360 up. Not the best ever, but also not ideal circumstances whatsoever. Something I realized I missed earlier on the front of these switches is the reset button, but it's not recessed. Now I liked it on the access point right there because it would be hard to accidentally press this. It's on the back. You can't even get to it if you wanted to. Here, when you're fumbling around in the rack trying to plug in a cable, I could see you accidentally pressing this. That being said, you probably have to hold it for some amount of time. Uh, so it's probably a non-issue, but seems a little bit sketch. Hey, look at that. Actually, the switch is picking up now. Here, let's click setup. Appears to have been factory reset. Do you want to set up this device again? Yes. It's currently assigned to another user's account. This can happen if the previous owner of this device has not deleted this device from their account. Do you want to request permission to use this device? Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. It's software DRM'd. 
with their cloud hosting, even though I reset it. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's good from the perspective of it getting stolen and not being able to reuse, but also if you were to sell one of these and not reset it from your account, that would be not great. They tested it in the lab and that's why it was adopted to somebody's account. They reset it and now we're in. It also has a software update, but this time I'm gonna roll because I wanna know how fast it updates. So there we go, update, click. Let's see. Oh, there's a little, no way. There's no way it was that fast. Update, 100% complete, it says. Bullsh I'll refresh, let's see. No, it still says 100% complete. I don't know about this, chief. The update status went away. Oh, I think it's rebooting now. That's pretty fast. Let's see how fast it reboots though. Yeah, I don't have internet anymore. That makes sense. Internet gone. No, I have to connect to the neighbor's Wi-Fi now. The signal sucks. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm doing stuff now. Blinky blink. Hey, there we go. Okay, a couple minutes. Pretty, pretty fast, pretty respectable. Let's take a look at what the switch features are really quick. Okay, open it up there. I see the ports in a very condensed manner. Power cycle, the PoE, that's good. I can click on individual ports. I can set the native VLAN, the tagged allowed VLANs, PoE, speed, isolation, a download upload limit, a voice VLAN, loop detection, storm control, Mac control. Seems like most of the things here. Oh, it even has 802.1x. Uh, so you can do network access control. That's pretty cool. I can mirror ports, combine them. I don't know what this color stuff is. What does this even mean? Colors are a way to group specific APs together. APs will only broadcast these Wi-Fi networks that match their configured colors. Both APs and Wi-Fi networks can be part of multiple colors and groups. Okay, so that's basically AP groups. That's what the colors mean. They probably should have just called it groups and given the groups colors rather than calling them colors, but here we are. I can set VLANs, I can select all. It's, it's pretty much what you would expect. It feels very new, like this is, software has existed for, I, I don't know, you know, a year and they've got all the features in there, but maybe the layout and whatever isn't the most optimal yet, but it seemingly works. Link lights, hey, you can turn them off. Let's try it. Hey, look at that, the link lights are off. That's a good feature, LED, white, red. Ooh, I can change the color. Let's go green. Eh? Ah, green. I wish it had a screen, but the green is cool too. So overall, I mean, I'm pretty stoked that there's another competitor in this kind of price point and space for small businesses and kind of like enthusiasts at home where you want more control over your stuff. I look forward to when there's a local self-hostable controller. I know that that's in beta right now, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Don't really like that it was DRM'd to another account as physical hardware. Really wish that wasn't a thing. Maybe the local controller will make that not a problem, but overall, it's cool. It's a very responsive dashboard, that much I like. Like, look at this, this is like a live feed of what's going on. Like the Ubiquiti one is pretty responsive, but this is, this might be another league, especially considering it's currently cloud-based. It's pretty impressive. If you like this video, like it, get subscribed. Um, April Fools, by the way. <laughs> We're not actually moving into the house. We're not actually doing short circuit from a cold, cold tub. Thank gosh. <laughs>